Hey, Longhorn fans, it's time to get your horns up. Play the Texas Lottery today for your chance to win exciting prizes. And remember, luck happens to people like Heather Booth, who keep a lookout for chances to win from the Texas Lottery. Heather won Longhorn prizes and Texas Lottery scratch tickets. Hook them horns and scratch them tickets. How about a nice welcome for Brian Arakpo joining us tonight? It's good to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, Brian alone, there, there's so many accolades you could run down the list, but it, but the, the one that really comes to mind for me, and, and Sark, I know you appreciate uh, things like this. He had basically the most decorated season by a defensive player in UT history as a senior in 2008 when he swept the Nagurski Trophy, the Lombardi Award, the Hendricks Award, and was a finalist for the Lott Trophy. That's a lot. That's crazy, I know. <laughs> hey. I, could, I couldn't um, – Bianco knows I've been waiting for Tim Crowder and Brian Robinson to leave. And these guys didn't want to leave, so I had to wait till my senior year to, to blossom. But, no, nah, I mean, credit to those guys. and They taught me a lot and, uh, you know, just try to keep the winning tradition. I feel like you could still play, man. Man, I can give you a couple third downs here and there. Trust me. I, you know, I'm training my little guy, but sometimes I get the juices flowing. I'm like, you know, I still feel good. All the years he had also in the NFL as well, uh, what, what's the biggest difference to, to let folks know about the, the mental and physical approach that you take as a day-by-day -day professional athlete as to your time when you were a student athlete at UT? Man, you have to put in the, the work and you have to put in the effort. I mean, um, you're, not, you're, gonna, you're gonna get what you put in. I mean, if you're a guy that takes everything for granted, doesn't really show up for meetings, you know, have have do everything, I mean, you're going to get lackluster, mediocre resorts, results. So myself, along with other leaders like Quan Cosby, Roy Miller, I can go through a laundry list of guys uh, that we all learned how to play this game at a high level. We all played extremely, extremely uh, great chemistry together, togetherness, and, uh, you know, we won a lot of games doing that. So I want to I want to hit ask you on something. So you referenced about waiting to your senior year. Sure. And now we're in this day and age in college football Man. of the transfer portal. Yeah. How difficult do you think it would be today to wait your turn while you know there's great players in front of for you? For sure, for sure. And um, for my story um, – Man, it'll be so difficult in today's game. I get it because everybody wants to play now. Everybody wants to, you know, to, 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 to be a household name. You know, they want to make an impact right now. But for my story, I cherish that red shirt. I cherish kind of waiting my time. And then I had the opportunity to get sprinkled in the defense here and there. And people forget, I won freshman of the year being a backup, you know. Yeah. So I, I learned a lot, and I didn't have the pressure to be the guy yet. And then once my name was called and once my number was ready to roll, you know, I had all the tools that I've learned from the, the, the great people in front of me so I can carry that over and, and play my game. By the time you got to 08, did you also relish then the shifted role of becoming a leader and a mentor to some of the other younger guys that were coming along? Yeah, it kind of shifted that. Um, those gears kind of shifted in 07 was the start. Um, unfortunately, as UT knows, I'm – I got high low the very first game of yep. that season. Um, but I was fortunately en enough to come back midseason and then just kind of carry that, that propelled me for my senior year. One of the things that you think that it, you talked about, you get what you put into it as well. Uh, in this day and age, and Sark made a really good point about where guys are expecting to play immediately. There's NIL involved. There's that thought about the next level. Yeah. How does a student athlete stay grounded and focused and, and driven to the purpose that they're designed to be as a, as a collegiate student athlete? I mean, it's quite, it's quite simple. I mean, student athletes, if you guys are listening, I mean, if you're thinking about the NFL and you just got on campus, you, you, you will fail miserably. I think you got to make sure you take care of your craft and, and, and take care of your business at hand. So, you, you know, the college level, the collegiate level is hard enough. Worry about the NFL when, they, when the NFL is not going anywhere. Those guys, those guys make so much money to be worrying about you. So just take care of the collegiate level. Make sure you take this thing seriously. Make sure you don't take it for granted because there's so many guys that wait way too late and then all of a sudden your four or five years is gone. So just take your time, master the collegiate level first, and then you start work preparing yourself for the NFL. I think, I think that's a great point you make because, you know, naturally as we're trying to build this roster, right, sure. one recruiting class after another, that 
there's still really good players on our team. Absolutely. And here comes this influx of players. And every offseason, I was telling Craig about this, I get asked about this new recruiting class and how much they're going to help the team. Sure. Well, a couple of them might. But yeah. there's some juniors and seniors that they've been waiting their turn yeah. for, for their opportunity to, to, to do it. And the challenge that, that we keep trying to impress upon these younger players is this isn't wait till next spring to get better. You need to get better every day right now Absolutely. so that when next spring comes, you're prepared to compete for that starting job. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a, that's a hard thing to do when you've been the star player for your <laughs> entire life and get here and you get humbled to I'm on scout team. Yeah. And I'm a defensive end, and I got to go against Kelvin Banks every day. And you think that that's a bad thing, yeah. when in reality, it's a good thing. You're yeah. going against one of the best tackles in the country every single day where you can improve your craft. Absolutely. You're going against the best every single day. Um, and those guys that are the older guys, they see the, the five-star, the four-star guys coming in. So it's going to impact their game. So if their game gets elevated to a high level, you're like, I don't want to get left behind. So I'm going to go ahead and keep keep up with the same with those guys because I know that's they're the starters for a reason, um, and that's kind of how I carried it. I had Brian Robinson, I had Tim Crowder. Those guys were older than me. I seen those guys were getting ready for the NFL, but I seen how they worked. I seen how they carried themselves, and I'm like, man, I want to I want to be the guy. I yeah. want the coaches to be ready when my name my number's called i won't you know drop the i won't you know drop the ball so that's exactly how they approach it and if those guys are worrying about that college wait to the nfl when you're in the first round and you're running on kickoff <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so wait, i mean it's a whole different ball game it's a whole different ball game so be appreciative of what you have now get better now get ready to go so when coach sark and the rest of the coaching staff calls your number i mean it's it's going to be fun uh, I'll tell you what else is fun. We're going to get Brian to talk about what he's doing now, what he's doing today coming up when we continue Longhorn Weekly with Coach Sark, our special guest Brian Arakpo here from Pluckers, the West Campus location in Austin, presented by the Texas Lottery. We'll continue in a moment. Worthy is in a slot run. On third down, shotgun snap, back to throw. Under pressure, Ewers scrambles left. He's got running room, 25, Quinn to the 20, 15, 10-5. Touchdown, Texas. Quinn Ewers around the corner, a sprint to the end zone, and a 29-yard touchdown run. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly here with Coach Sark. From Pluckers, the West Campus location in Austin, presented by the Texas Lottery, our special guest, Brian Arakpo, who just said, it, it, with this highlight coming on, you pointed to Quinn Ewer's name. You said, that guy is playing good. We asked him about that touchdown run in the postgame. He goes, it was a blur. I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sort of thing. But, Sark, I know you were impressed with what he did, how he could get to the edge and get beyond the one defender at a shot at him. Well, I, I think, like we've ta touched on, you know, he's really changed his body. You talk about – the work ethic, what you do in the offseason, you get out of it, what you put into it. Uh, he's he's changed his body, and he's been utilizing his legs on third down all year long, and no, none better than that one. And, and Rack will tell you, there's nothing worse than the quarterback who can run oh, when man. you really want your pin your ears back and oh, rush a passer. We hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hate it. Hey, Quinn, keep doing your thing, man. Keep, keep making these guys wear these guys out because as pass rushes, like you said, we hate it. We're coming off. We get a clean rush. And then all of a sudden he takes off for the first down, and now we got to come out, get a breather, <laughs> and do all that stuff. So, no, he, he's playing phenomenal. Well, one thing that you've been doing, doing your thing, you're involved in a variety of business since after retiring, following a 10-year career in the NFL. Uh, you're, you're involved in a variety of enterprises, but none better known than – Gigi's Cupcakes. Yeah. Uh, you and your partnership with, uh, with uh, Lifetime Michael Longhorn, uh, Michael Griffin, you do these gourmet cupcakes out there in the, in the Lakeway area. Tell folks about this deal. Yeah, honestly, that thing was a blessing in disguise, to be truthful. Um, me and Griff obviously played with the Titans. That, that place originated in Nashville. And uh, out in, the, in, the, in our area, we didn't have any kind of cupcake delicacy spot. So, you know, my kids, you know, love cupcakes and – we had to drive really far to get some, so we like, you know what, let's just bring this thing out here to Austin. And it took the world by storm. I mean, seeing two guys, I'm in shoulder pads with a pink apron <laughs> making, <laughs> making cupcakes, so it just 
took the world by storm. Microsoft loved it. They picked us up, and we had all types of deals and speaking engagements, and it, it's been phenomenal so far. You know who loves cupcakes? What's that? That guy. Oh, we got to get him some. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big some. cupcake guy, man. Oh, I got to <laughs> yeah. get you some. Yeah. We're going to yeah. send you some specials. What is, sure. your, what is your best selling cupcake? Uh, we have four, actually, but if I had to pinpoint, our wedding cake, which is the traditional vanilla, um, and then we have the red velvet, the chocolate midnight magic, and the uh, strawberry shortcake. Those are those are core four. Wow. But then we have hundreds of recipes, and we do it by season. So Now, did you have to actually – physically learned did it did it take a while to learn the art of making a cupcake that's what makes the story so fascinating because you get a guy that's 260 pounds now i'm in the back <laughs> i had to we had to go through like a cupcake training camp really when we opened this thing up and it wasn't like just dump your money here and you're gonna let it no we had to get in there and we had to learn the business in and out to where baking decorating customer service you name it we had to learn everything so yes we were in there 6 a.m baking cupcakes and and getting everything ready for the shop i love that i want to i want to switch gears here to the golf game oh yeah all right so (laughs) i'm trying to i'm looking at you right now i'm trying to figure out how far do you hit your driver, man? That's that's my that's my biggest question. I mean, honestly, that is my best club. So I can hit the driver 300 plus easy. So I'm I can definitely get it going. You hit it straight 300 plus? Straight, yeah, yeah. straight. Okay, yeah, I absolutely do. But then after that, then it's like you know. Who, I, who I remember know? asking you, you were a player. What part of your game did you like the most, and what part of your game did you want to have more improvement in? Yeah. And, you, and you and you talked about those things. Yeah. So I, I put the question to you now as a golfer. What part of your game do you like the most? What part of your game needs the most work? That's the part that I need the most work is the short game. The long game, I love it because I know I got all this space to work with, but the short game is like I can't. I've been, been a natural workout warrior my whole life, and I realize golf, you, you can't use strength like that. So I'm 60, 80 yards and in. I'm, I'm just not that great, but, you know, it's a hit or miss. All right, so – we all know Griff, yeah. right, and how he can talk. Oh, yeah, no question. How, how, how does he talk <laughs> on the golf course? I mean, what, oh, who's, who, who's talking the most out there, man? Like, what, what's happening on the golf course? So, normally it was us, me, myself, DJ, Griff, and um, another player. The fourth is always a miscellaneous, but Griff? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how y'all deal with Griff. I love Griff to death. If you hear this, you know how I am. Griff will he will talk he will talk you out of a I don't know. He he talks a lot, so is, he tries to distract you out of your game. For is sure. his game better than yours? Oh no question. Griff golf Griff golf this morning and he'll golf tomorrow morning and then he'll golf the next morning. <laughs> he golfs every all the time. This is more important. Who makes a better cupcake? You know what. I will I will give it to Griff. He decorates the best. No, he bakes the best, but I'm the best decorator. So we have two different uh, titles. That's why it works so well. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Brian Arakpo with us here. Thanks for coming by. Right, we appreciate that. Thank you, guys. That. Appreciate it. Coming up, we'll take a look at this week's opponent, the Kansas Jayhawks, when Longhorn Weekly continues on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield.